It's the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. Martin Brundle and Mark Blundell, two ex-Formula One drivers, two new Formula One cars, exploring the science of slipstreaming and overtaking. Well, what an incredible opportunity. Thank you to Williams Toyota. We have two live, fully supported Formula One cars to show you what it's like to follow and try to overtake in Formula One. Why it's sometimes difficult. Why it's sometimes absolutely impossible. And what you can do about it to make that move and also to block the move too. Slipstreaming is all about driving faster through the vacuum created when the car in front punches a hole in the air. We call it a tow. I can't get the front to stick, and then the back wants to step out as well, but I've got a good exit. Right now I'm into this history, I'm picking up extra red, yes, I'm in just a sweet shot, I'm going to stop out, and nail it, and he was defenseless there. I just got that extra grip, I just got the extra pace. Racing drivers are competitive animals, sometimes wanting to win at any cost. They push the rules to the limit. Blocking a slipstream is allowed, providing it's fair. What could Mark have done about it? The rules say you're only allowed to move once. And he didn't attempt to block me too much, but I had plenty of track available. There is this kind of almost an unwritten rule, a code of practice between the drivers, but you don't do the following. You're only allowed to move one. So I'm in the slipstream now. I'm going to go to his right. He's blocking me. And now he's coming back to the left. You cannot do that. I'm going to gesticulate. I'm going to hope the FIA race stewards see that. They're not allowed to do that. If the driver ahead of us keeps blocking, then we have to get inventive. While he's busy watching his mirrors, we'll move around and sell him a dummy. I'm going to try another tactic on him. I've got the slipstream again. I'm going to make him think I'm going this way. And I'm coming back. I'm going to nail him down there. Up the inside. usually knows when a pass is inevitable. As the car passing him arrives extra fast into the braking zone, he prepares for immediate revenge, the switchback. Here I am behind Mark, he's following this guy well. I think I'll pick it into back, and I'm gonna nail him at the inside. Then I'm gonna hold him slightly wide, but I've got in too deep. He speeds back, and he's got me. Let's try that again. I'm going to keep the apex, so a nice clean pass. I've been following Mark now for a while. I think I'm quicker. Into Vale, I'm more confident. On the brakes, into Vale. I'm going to hang him out to dry. To avoid the switchback needs some cunning. Once you control track position into the corner, simply block and slow your rival down slightly. Hang him out to dry. Okay, 
I'm going to hang him out to dry him out. I'm going to hesitate slightly on the second apex and nail it. That's got him. To make matters worse, visibility from the cockpit and especially the mirrors can be very challenging when racing in close combat. So we've shown you the theory of overtaking. Let's see how it works out in practice. Nico Rosberg shows us the classic dummy in Bahrain. Here, Lewis Hamilton is very close to the limit of the rules whilst defending his place at Monza against Massa's Ferrari. A classic switchback now in Turkey, as Jarno truly goes in way too hot and quickly loses the place he's just gained. It's Lewis Hamilton again as he makes a brilliant pass on Kimi Raikkonen, then hovers on the apex while he collects the car and keeps his position. Wonderful driving skills, but of course we don't see as many overtakes as we'd like. But they are like sensational goals or rugby tries, often well worth the wait.